Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of anterior STEMI that ended up requiring unprotected left main trifurcation stenting. The patient is a 90-year-old man with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, CKD, and paroxysmal atrial fibrillation who had a small stroke about six weeks ago. He presented to the ER with severe crushing chest pain uh, after exercising with a friend. He uh, did not look well. He was barely conscious, uh, he was profusely diaphoretic, and he was moaning in pain. The ECG showed marked uh, anterior ST elevations. Uh, the patient had no immediate family, but his uh, friend who was with him uh, said the patient was uh, very independent uh, despite his age, and once told her that he would want everything done. Um, so the STEMI team was activated. On diagnostic angiogram, uh, the RCA was non-dominant, and the left circ and large ramus had only mild disease. The culprit uh, seems to be an occluded apical LED. And frankly, this was a little bit surprising uh, given the patient's presentation and marked uh, anterior ST elevation. So uh, we went to work. Um, the LED was easily wired uh, with a BMW. Um, the occlusion was very distal and had an appearance of, a, of an embolus. Uh, we thought maybe uh, from his uh, paroxysmal AFib. So we went ahead and performed um, aspiration thrombectomy, uh, hoping not to have to place a stent uh, so far distally. After aspiration thrombectomy, uh, there was somewhat improved apical flow. Uh, but the patient uh, still was not doing well. Uh, his ST elevations uh, had not changed, and uh, he was uh, still clearly in severe pain. And he was also still hypotensive. So is there something else that was going on? We took a spider view, and both the large ramus and the circ uh, seemed fine. And it wasn't until we took a very steep uh, leocranial view uh, that we found a real culprit. There was a hazy, uh, ulcerated uh, thrombotic lesion at the ostium of the LED. So in retrospect, uh, that LED could have been 100% occluded at first, uh, causing the marked uh, ST elevation, uh, the severe pain and the hypotension. And part of the thrombus could have then embolized uh, to the apical LED, uh, causing the embolic occlusion uh, that we had just aspirated. So uh, what do we do now? So we uh, called our uh, cardiac surgery colleagues, uh, but they felt that the uh, cabbage was uh, too high risk uh, due to his uh, advanced age, his recent stroke, and ongoing ST elevation and shock. So we went ahead and uh, with a PCI strategy. We uh, gently uh, dilated the osteo LED with a uh, 3.5 millimeter balloon. And after angioplasty, uh, the LED looked a little bit better, uh, but there was still some haziness uh, probably reflecting the uh, ruptured plaque. So we stented the osteo LED with a 4.0 by 15 millimeter uh, drug eluting stent, probably slightly protruding into the left main and post dilated uh, with a 4.0 millimeter NC balloon. After uh, stenting the LED, um, the LED looked great, but both the uh, osteoramus and the osteal cirque are now uh, severely pinched, probably due to thrombus and uh, plaque shifting. Um, both the ramus and cirque are quite large vessels, and remember, uh, the cirque is dominant. Uh, so what the next? We uh, decided to go after both vessels. Uh, the uh, ramus uh, wired quite easily uh, with a uh, pearl water. The circ had uh, sharper angulation, uh, but was eventually successfully wired uh, with a hydrophilic wire. Uh, we next planned to do kissing angioplasty uh, in the ramus and circ, uh, but we were uh, unable to pass any equipment uh, into the circ, uh, including a 1.25 uh, millimeter balloon. So we uh, turned to the ramus, um, and um, a 2.5 millimeter balloon uh, easily advanced into the vessel. Uh, we dilated the ramus, uh, thinking that dilation here would change the trifurcation geometry enough to allow us to now pass a balloon into the circ uh, for kissing angioplasty. But uh, after dilating the ramus, uh, the patient uh, started to brady down. Uh, he then arrested. 
uh, he had the ventricular fibrillation, uh, which was immediately shocked and then went into PEA. Uh, code blue was called, uh, CPR was started. Uh, we took an angiogram uh, during chest compressions, and as you can see, uh, there was now sluggish flow in the LAD. Uh, there was thrombus and possibly a balloon dissection and a ramus, and the dominant circ uh, was now occluded. And things kept getting worse. Uh, with uh, repeated uh, defibrillations and CPR, the uh, guide catheter kicked out and all three wires came out. Uh, we then decided to upsize to an eight French guide and under duress in between chest compressions, uh, quickly rewired the LED, ramus and circumflex. We were then able to dilate the circumflex with a 2.0 millimeter balloon and the ramus uh, with a 2.5 millimeter balloon. And fortunately, at this point, uh, we uh, got ROSC back. Uh, flow was restored to the circ and the ramus. Uh, we inserted a balloon pump. Uh, impella uh, was not available at the center. Uh, we next did a sequential uh, kissing balloon angioplasty of the circ and ramus, then the LAD and the circ, and then the LAD and the ramus. And here's the uh, angiographic result after uh, kissing angioplasty. Uh, we had uh, Timmy three floor everywhere, uh, but the ostium of the ramus and the ostium of the circ uh, both uh, still looked uh, somewhat hazy. So uh, what should we do next? Uh, should we stent? Uh, should we uh, declare victory and just walk away? Uh, remember that this is a 90-year-old patient uh, with a recent CDA, so he is not really a good candidate uh, for a glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor. So we decided to stent. Uh, we placed a 3.0 millimeter DES in the ramus and a 3.0 millimeter DES in the uh, circumflex uh, in a kissing uh, V stent uh, configuration. Now, um, outside of emergencies, uh, simultaneous kissing stents uh, is uh, definitely uh, not uh, my favorite strategy uh, because it usually leads to a large uh, stent neocarina uh, that makes future PCI very difficult. However, in this scenario, uh, it seemed reasonable, especially since the neocarina will be minimized in the uh, V-stent uh, configuration. And remember that kissing stent is uh, only possible with uh, seven French guides or larger. Uh, in this case, uh, we had upsized uh, to an eight French system. Uh, we then uh, post-dilated uh, using simultaneous uh, triple uh, kissing balloon angioplasty, uh, also known as trissing. Um, trissing uh, is only possible uh, with uh, uh, larger guides. And uh, here is our final angiographic result, uh, which we thought was uh, quite satisfactory uh, considering how the case went. Uh, there was a Timmy three flow everywhere, and there was 0% residual th uh, stenosis in all three vessels. The uh, patient uh, was airlifted to a tertiary center, and fortunately, he only ended up having mild left ventricular dysfunction. He was discharged uh, eventually after a prolonged hospital course, and a lifetime of a P2Y12 inhibitor uh, was recommended. All right, so uh, there really isn't uh, very much out there in the literature on left main uh, trifurcation PCI. Uh, uh, this is still a, a fairly rare procedure and consequently there are only a few uh, small studies. Um, there was a review that was published in uh, CERC uh, Cardiovascular Interventions recently, which uh, nicely summarizes uh, what is uh, currently known. Um, in brief, um, left main trifurcation is still best left to the surgeons. Uh, the syntax score is automatically at least intermediate to high, and cabbage uh, should be the first choice. Um, if uh, you are forced uh, to work on a left main trifurcation, uh, a single stent strategy is generally uh, favored, and the only triple stent uh, if necessary. Uh, PCI andrographic success is high, uh, but longer term outcome is uh, at best modest uh, with uh, relatively high rates of MACE and uh, target lesion revascularization. All right, so uh, some uh, take home messages. Um, uh, first, uh, as this case uh, nicely illustrates, uh, keep looking uh, if the first apparent culprit does not quite fit uh, with the patient's uh, clinical presentation. Uh, next, uh, respect uh, the osteo LED. Uh, PCI can go downhill quickly especially in left dominant patients or in trifurcations with large ramus and large circumflex. Uh, be on your toes. 
Um, trifurcation PCI is difficult and is best avoided. It should still be the domain of surgeons. However, if it does become necessary, have a low threshold to upsize to an 8 French guide. Um, a larger guide will give you more flexibility for choosing uh, trifurcation uh, stenting strategies, especially in the event of an emergency, and will also allow you to do a simultaneous triple kissing balloon angioplasty or trissing. Thank you for watching.